Man City versus Ipswich. Uh, Man City at minus 12.30. Ipswich at plus 22.95. That'll probably be the biggest price we see from an away side all season. The draw is at plus 1,080. Uh, handicap is now 2.75 at minus 102. The minus 2.5 was around minus 120 all week. Man City, do they score four? Because if they do, you're going to get paid at plus 125. Ipswich just to score. Oh, plus 128. I think Man City went to nil. Last year, though, Brad, it was all about getting Man City in the first half. And I tell you now, Ipswich, I don't care how well they prepare. They are not. I've never seen a team like this in the second game back in the Premier League. Yeah, they are overmatched. And you said last year it was all about that first half. You're absolutely right for Manchester City. Uh, they won 14 um, of the 19 uh, home first half uh uh, first halves in total. But what's interesting, I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive, right? Because, you know, there's teams like Liverpool who kind of play with their food, which they did against Ipswich uh, in that first match. And, and you could say it was Ipswich playing at home and, and having a ton of momentum, uh, only holding them to, th to Liverpool to three shots and an XG of less than 0 0.1. But this is a whole different beast. Manchester City take care of business. Last season, these numbers are kind of remarkable. They were eight. They were 14 and 8 against bottom half clubs in the first half. Eight, they won by multiple goals. They were 10 and two at home in winning the first half against bottom clubs. Five of those were by two or more. They were three and oh at home against the spread in the first half against newly promoted clubs. It's those are numbers that you just got to take. I'm taking Manchester City minus one in the first half. It's a little juiced at minus 128, but I think I could still live with that, right? Because even if they just win by one, you get your money back. But this could absolutely be a thrashing. We talk about Erling Holland and how great he is, but where he really shows up, and I think it's because of the passing lanes and the availability to create good opportunities for shots um, and get the ball on his foot or on his head, it's against these bottom half teams. He absolutely decimates them. When you see games against Luton Town, when you see teams against Sheffield United, when you saw games against Burnley, he, were, he was putting up really big numbers. And it's not just the goal output, right? It's getting in good areas and having really good looks at finishing chances. I think they, they dominate its switch here. I went with the first half uh, minus one. We don't. We don't know if we're going to get Rodri back. I've seen conflicting reports where some say he's doubtful, some say he's probable, but didn't seem to stop them against Chelsea, right? Uh, I think when Rodri was announced out and the lineups came out, everyone was rushing to bet both teams to score an over two and a half. But Manchester City looked really good in that first game, uh, winning two, two to nil. So I'm going to go with first half uh, minus one at minus 128. Yeah, I remember Ipswich being beat like seven or eight uh, when, I, when I played. Um, I just... I look at this George and go, Man City, them at least 2 0 up. So there's many ways to skin this cat. Over one and a half goals, first half for Man City, plus 115. Just over one and a half goals in the first half. So it could be a 1 1 or, or it could be Ipswich winning 2 0. I know that's not happening, but there is many ways to maybe get a better one. And obviously, if you're going to go with a minus one at City and the 1 0 up, it's a push. So you've got that insurance as well. Uh, how many do Man City score, George? I've got this 4 or 5 0. Yeah, I've got it written down here. It's pretty self-explanatory. I think this could go to four or five. I've only backed minus two, but I do think that it's it's a four or five game. I mean, there's a difference between someone like Erling Haaland and let's say another top club, uh, Spurs. And you take Dominic Solanke, and you saw Solanke against against Leicester. He had two shots on target in the first fourteen. I think it was fourteen minutes, and he didn't score either. But it's a different beast when you're talking about Erling Haaland and Dominic Solanke. So Harland won't won't you know he don't he doesn't miss he he's not gonna gonna like slide off and, and drop off if he gets a chance he's scoring and I think against Ipswich especially a weaker a weaker defense and defense that that played um, Championship football last year they will run over them and I I think two three four in the first half it, it, it's possible it's so easily possible. Yeah, I mean, this could get out of hand very, very quickly. And the other one is that if they do get up, then remember the bench is just as strong as the starting lineup as well. I hope that Foden comes back. Foden, any time, would be uh, a definite one. A lot of people are liking uh, Haaland to score twice or more at plus 200. Seems very skinny when the team could be scoring five or six on their own. Maybe a Haaland hat-trick 
could also be a way to go. But listen, this is this served us so well last year. It's not broke. It don't need fixing. So let's keep going back to the well. Let's have a little look at these official picks because Man City minus two and a half at minus 125 for myself and for George. First half Man City minus one at minus 128 for Brad. And I've gone first half over 1.5 goals in the game just in case something freaky happens at minus 118. Also saw that Mitch was doing Man City over one and a half goals first half at plus 115. I think we're all looking Maybe 4, 5, nil. if it's 4 or 5, 1. We still don't care because this is the game where we're all banking on getting cash back into that record. 